he did it. We have left the main turnpike road that follows along the coast and we have turned down and we are driving down, down, down. Um, we're going to make it all the way down to the coast here. We are at the very north end of Cinque Terre, a national park here in Italy that literally means five lands because there are five little villages or cities or towns through here that many centuries ago you could only reach from the ocean because they are literally built within the cliffs along the coast. But now we are lucky enough that there are roads that can get us to portions of it and then a little train that can get us to the rest of it. So that is where we are headed and as we drive down through this uh, mountain region headed down to the coast, one of the first things I told Kurt is it literally reminds me a bit of Colombia or Brazil. We kind of feel like we're home. <laughs> the roads are very, very narrow and there's some steep drop-offs and we're going through little towns looking down into people's backyard farms and it is stunningly beautiful. So we're going to show you this part of it and uh, see if you think it feels like a little bit like South America too. But Kurt has to concentrate because he's the one driving this road. Now one major difference is yes, there are steep drop-offs, narrow roads, very tight switchbacks, steep roads, but there's pretty much guardrail along the whole thing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we just passed a car on a switchback. It definitely reminds me of South America. That might be why you see this big grin on my face. This is what we've been missing, being able to drive through the culture rather than just look down on it from the big road. So. I think we're off to a very good start here in Cinque Terre. Looks like there's parking places down there. Oh yeah, and there's a camper, so we're good. When we did our research of coming here and trying to come here in a van, we had found a parking spot down on the beach in the northernmost of the five towns, which I think is Montessori, but we were not sure if we'd be able to get there or not. We're still about five minutes away, but it is looking like uh, we might be able to get there because we can look down and see that there is another camper parked down there in the parking lot that we are targeting. Now up above where we've already come from, there are many campgrounds where you can camp and uh, you can take a train down here to this area. But if we can park down in here, that will be even better. So another thing as we were coming down, I thought we were just going straight down to the coast, but we had some ups and downs through those beautiful roads. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of that because it sure made both of us happy. Oh, now I'm looking out over here and seeing some beautiful castle looking thing. We're almost there, guys. Keep your fingers crossed that we'll be able to park down actually in one of these towns. You excited, Kurt? Oh man, this is beautiful. I love this drive down, to be honest with you. I was thinking to myself with how these coastlines are that maybe doing cruises and seeing these places by water might be the best way to view it. But after driving down through this mountainside and we're going to get to stay down here, which basically means we're going to be living in Cinco Terra for a couple days. So this is the right way to do this thing. Well, we still got to get there. <laughs> We're getting into town, so it's going to get a bit narrower, guys. Woo! We haven't had the pucker factor in a while. This car's hanging out. I know you see him. I'll shut up. We are 
in South America. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the statue over there holding that. Oh, yeah. Nothing's coming. Ooh. All right. We found parking right here on the beach in Montessori. We'll have to make sure that's how you say the name of this town. Now it's winter time. I would imagine in the summertime, this place would be packed. Now the only disadvantage to coming in the winter time is I'm not going swimming, are you, Kurt? No. <laughs> but I would say it's probably low 50s, a little overcast. We may have overcast weather, but that's okay. It's still gonna be beautiful. So we're at the very north end of the northernmost town. As you look south along the coast, you can actually see the next town, and we get there by train. Now, it might not be the most beautiful campsite, but that's not what this campsite's about, is it, Kurt? Well, we have waterfront overlooking this, and I don't know, we have the giant statue there that's holding up a bridge right on the sea, looking at the mountain face. I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. And we have to decide whether we're going to eat lunch in the van and then have an afternoon snack here in town or whether we're going to go into town and eat lunch, which would probably be pricey. So we've got some decisions to make. Let's get settled into camp. There's the train. Don't worry. We'll be taking y'all on that. Just not today. All right. We had a little home cooked meal in the van. Spaghetti. Little biscotti, simple biscotti. Now that's Italian. <laughs> but we're about to go for a little walk. And we're gonna go for a little walk here on the beach. And we got this sort of statue of the giant right here. I read that it's 100 years old and that it was bombed along with the building up behind it in World War II. But it's sort of made with concrete and rebar and they built it back. And it's one of the monuments here. Now along this coastline, I don't think there is much beach, but we are parked on one. And this is a little mix of a little sandy beach and a pebbly beach. The water is a nice dark kind of charcoal blue, but it's very clear and I'm sure very cold, right Snow? I'm not touching it. <laughs> so today we drove in here and we're just gonna spend the afternoon in this first city kind of getting a feel for how the train works, grab a coffee, see the giant, of course, and all of this. But there are four more towns scattered south of us that you cannot drive to. Um, at least you never could in our van. Really small cars might be able to. But tomorrow we will get on the train and we will explore these four towns. Now I cannot remember the name of them, but I think the next one starts with a V. And you can actually see it right there. And apparently once you get on the train, it's like a four or five minute train ride and you're there. And you hop off and you explore that town and then you go to the next town. I don't think we'll get it all done in one day. We don't want to do that. I think we'll scatter this over several days, two or three days, not counting today. But this is supposed to be the most accessible and I don't want to call it not the prettiest one, but not so much built into the cliffs. They were actually able to get a road down here. Some of the others, the houses and everything, the restaurants are literally built into the side of the mountain and it's supposed to be amazing. Now, Kurt told you earlier that there, were, there weren't many beaches through here. I actually think this is the only town of the five towns that has a beach. 99% sure about that. There's gonna be a lot of rocky cliff areas. All right, so I'm gonna be able to tell you the names of the towns. This is the northernmost town. It's where we are. Monteroso. The next town is Vernaza. And then we got Corniglia. And this one is the only one that has no access to actually going down and touching the sea. But it's supposed to have beautiful views. And then we have Manarola. And I'm going to say this wrong. I'm going to call it Rio Maggiore. The five towns of Cinque Terre. And all along these cliff faces where this little town is, 
they've got little roads meandering around and you can tell they're doing everything they can to keep the cliffs from giving way to the ocean. But if you look closely at the rocks, I'm not sure what kind of rocks these are. They look some kind of like lava formation to me, but they're black with white sort of marble in them and they look really cool. And of course up against the, the sea, the beautiful Like, looks like it melted or something. Like heat just pushed it up from the earth. But if it'll flake right, like right here, like slate does, you know? Oh, it's slaty. Oh, you can see the layers. Look at that up above. I think that's what it is. Welcome to the little historic town center of Monterosso. It has some little narrow streets, and of course it's off season, but I see one of those little cool tuk-tuks up there. <laughs> we'll make a little loop up here, guys, and check this little place out. A lot of places are closed, but it's not shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder people, which is always something that's nice. I know sometimes it's nice to see the hustle and bustle, but we enjoy being able to move through nice and easy. So the black and white stripes of this church, I think we will see quite a bit of that throughout these five towns as we see other churches. The white is actually marble from the hills just south of here. And the black stone, we believe, is the same black stone we were just showing you out along the coast. But in the early 1300s, the first half of the 1300s is when this church was constructed. And in the late, mid to late 1200s is when uh, the Genovese people came in and took over and dominated this territory. And they brought uh, brick workers from their home country to build all of these churches. So it's in that style. And the black and white is so distinct and so uh, unique looking for a church. We've seen pictures, but to be sitting here in the church and see it, it's really, really cool. And I was just reading that this window is called the Rose Window. And it is also was constructed in the early 1300s. And it has survived this whole time. A window. It's crazy. I love walking through these narrow streets and this is lined with bikes and there's a Vespa and there's even clothes hanging from clotheslines up above and sheets and of course we have those little tuk-tuk three-wheelers that we've seen coming up the mountains and the roads are 
I don't, you really can't call these cobblestones, but they're definitely stone roads and uh, structures are made with all sorts of different materials. I think some of them have been modified over the course of time. Some of them are clearly original, but what a little fascinating town. And we've seen this throughout France and Italy as well. But a lot of them that are built with defense, military defense and purpose. And so they have sort of these entrances, if you will, into the city. And this one has one right here. It's a little house above it. And uh, sometimes it's a little tunnel burrowed through the rocks. But down on the waterfront, they also have World War II bunkers. And so you can just see throughout time all the little different modifications they made the city to make them safer from intruders small roads and small cars that's what's required here and we're definitely in an area where they grow lots of citrus we've seen little clementine oranges i believe and also lemons Pesto lab, look at this. So, if what I read on the internet was correct, and I think it is now that we're walking on some of these streets, some of these streets used to be rivers and canals that flowed down from the mountains, and they still are, they just covered them. So they look like roads, but they're actually rivers underneath the road. And if you see all these crates, you can look down in there and you can hear the echo when the heavier cars drive on this. I think this is one of those river roads. All right, guys, I got to tell you, even though Monta Rosa is considered to be one of the, I don't know, less exciting, I guess, of the five little cities or villages here, I got to tell you, for strolling around, this place is really cool. There's all sorts of neat little places to see. There's tons of little restaurants in here. A lot of them are closed, but there's a lot of bread and bed and breakfasts. And I can imagine during the season, during the summertime, this place is probably off the charts. So I'm going to give you guys a spoiler alert. A look ahead, way, way ahead into the future. We don't know when yet. But my dad's wife, Karen, who is amazing, and my sister-in-law, Molly, and maybe my Aunt Betsy, if we can get her to get on a plane and fly across the ocean, are gonna come for a visit somewhere over here. Now, it needs to be somewhere where it's easy for us to park the van and them to grab a hotel. We're scoping out this area as a possibility. So, that makes me super excited because right now, it definitely looks like something that might would work. So, Fingers crossed these next four towns are exciting yeah. enough to hold their attention. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're gonna go grab some coffee. But we're gonna split up. Kurt's gonna go up a hill and see a nice overlook. I'm gonna skip those stairs. I wanna go through a tunnel. We're gonna meet at the coffee shop. There goes Kurt going up to the top. And here's my tunnel. I'll see him on the other side. What a beautiful walk. It was kind of a steep climb up here. Several switchbacks and there's some religious, uh, I don't know whether it's a church or what it is. 
and also a really cool statue of a guy with a dog but more impressed with the statue of the dog i really like the cat that was up here and we've seen a couple up here but look at this and you can see up there maybe it was a fortress or something i didn't go all the way up but i did want to get out here by the water time to watch this beautiful sunset and i got to meet back up with snow so we can grab a coffee wow what a magical place guys and what's cool is you can look up on side of the steep mountains here super steep and they kind of have them terraced and all the way up the mountains they're growing different things now from driving down through here we saw a lot of olives i just told you a little bit ago about the citrus but i think they also grow just about everything here from tomatoes and all sorts of produce it looks like a dry environment with all the cactus and aloe growing out of the mountainside and i also told you about the world war ii bunkers and there's one right down there below us so much history in a place like this just blows your mind away guys so much history and there you can see across the way there's another bunker from world war ii out there as well well, we had some coffee and a little dessert treat we shared right out here just watching the Mediterranean, watching the waves crash and watching this beautiful sun come down and in the backdrop, it lights up this cliff face, this Cinque Terre and we can see the five cities along the water right here in the sun and it is beautiful and it is relaxing. And Snow, is this, uh, is this kind of checking off your bucket list? Yeah, but I'm excited to see the other four towns, but it's kind of what I expected when we were walking through those little narrow alleys up there. And I think the other ones might even be a little bit cooler. I don't know, I think they might all have a little bit of their own little character. We're off to a good start. We're gonna play on the rocks for a little bit and uh, close this night out right good morning everyone we are waking up here in Chinko Teddy and first thing this morning I have a confession to make since we've been traveling we have not utilized public transportation uh, I don't think at all We've used it in our other life, but since we've been in a van, we just haven't used it. So today we got to hop on a train and we are on the northernmost city of the Cinco Terre, Monterroso, and we are headed up to the train to go to the south. So we're going to the furthest south city today. And so we're going for a train ride. We went to the official ticket office here and they needed our passports, which we didn't carry. But she said we can go over here to the gift shop and get them without our paperwork. Nelly at the little tourist office who sold us the tickets was a sweetheart. She was very helpful. And she gave us some important information. Now, I've been embarrassed to try to pronounce the name of these towns. So I'm going to put myself out there now. <laughs> But the town we're going to is Rio Maggiore. <laughs> Rio, Rio Maggiore. And when we asked the sweet lady how to say it, she laughed at us and said, it's very difficult for you. And she's right. But for today, we bought one ticket for a whole day. And what that gets us is we can use the bathrooms and the bus station for free. Normally they would cost one euro. And we can go ride the train anywhere we want to all day long. And there was an, oh, and it also comes with the bus in the third town, which we'll see if we get to that today or not. So, 14 euros? 14 euros, I for think. For one, so we'll see how this works out. And then decide what to do tomorrow. <laughs> we yeah. sold everything. Quit our jobs. Yeah. Todo el mundo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what are your names? Giulia. Enrico. Enrico. And you're from Italia? Yes, yeah. I'm from Modena. Maranello. Do you know Maranello? No. Modenelli. Ah. Oh, yeah. Now we know you're Maserati. You have to ah. come here. It's very nice yeah. city, Modena. 
Uh, is that Bologna. south? So north. No, uh, in north. Bologna. No, okay. Bologna. Okay. Now I have to go there. Well, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. When, when, you, when, you, when you go to Modena, you look to Ferrari factory. Yes, yeah. we will. Ah, Ferrari yes. factory in Modena. Really? Oh, you have to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, if no money, money, you can do anything you <laughs> want. <laughs> so, I know Kurt already gave you a little heads up about this, but since we started van life, that is the first time we've used public transportation. <laughs> Here we go. We got to get the lay of the land. Snow, did that map help you figure it out? No. We decided we're just going. We're just going to walk and see what happens. We are but exploring. But they do have us cutting a tunnel where there's only one way to go. Voila, we have arrived. Look at those weird tomatoes. All right, it looks like there's already a line for fried fish this morning. <laughs> oh, you get it in the little cone there. Look at that. Can you get in the line? See, it looks like they have calamari, shrimp. That might be something I have today. Look at this place. So I should say that this is what something the snow was worried about. As you look up to these tall buildings. Yeah, a lot of stairs and a lot of steepness. So some people uh, do all five towns in one day. And uh, we're gonna try to do it in two, counting yesterday, but I prepared Kurt for the fact that it may take us three. It may roll into tomorrow. Just because, and if you're new to the channel, you might not know, because of my heart condition, stairs and walking up steepness really kicks my butt. And I'm super slow when we're doing it. But it's beautiful, so we're going up. And it's all okay, because our home is right here. So we can stay as long as we want. And really, we're slow travelers anyway. And oh, look, they got the, how do you say that? Focaccia, focaccia bread. But that's kind of a local, like, specialty here. Oh, look, you can get your laundry done over there. Good news, I found some stairs. Oh boy, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> they're little baby stairs. They're still stairs, but they're not like those uh, ancient ruins stairs. <laughs> Past all the little food stalls and trinket stores and whatnot. So I think this is just where people live. But I wanted to come up here and just check it out a little bit. This reminds me a lot of many of the mountain cities in the Andes. How you just climb up through the city. And you can see this right here. These little narrow streets up through here. So there is a small church up here and it is a little more of a small sort of humble church. I mean, it's kind of set up and looks like it's actually kind of an active church. And like a lot of these churches, it's so beautifully done. Looks like this one on the header has 1941. But again, it's so pronounced with all the, the marble here. It's absolutely beautiful.
these churches up here are more humble than some of the other ones. Yeah. This one looks like it's made of like a slaty material. And you can see kind of the slate sort of that's aged and peeling off. And you can see the rust. So maybe there's some iron in the stone too. But as you can see the rust has kind of washed down over the white marble. And then in the background, of course, we have the guy hammering. And we also have the doors that are a bit weathered and worn too. And then as we come around to the front of the church, they've got a couple of big iron doors and definitely some more ornate marble carvings and statues up here. Let's go see what it looks like inside. And as humble as this church is on the outside, you can see all the intricate marble carvings in here. And it is just elaborate. And again, it has that same style with the white marble alternating with the black stones across the top for the roof supports and the arches. And it's definitely different and unique. But again, if you look at all the balusters and steps and rails and flooring and the statues. It's marble and different colors of just gorgeous Italian stones that we've seen in this region. Absolutely stunning in the inside. Wow. All right, one of the things that's cool about this little commune or this little village is that they have an elevator that goes up. I don't know, probably about six or seven stories. You get a nice aerial view of the town. And believe me, it's as beautiful from the sky as it is from down on the ground. And from up here, if you look back, we can see the towering church steeple to the church that I was just in. And you can see in the valley here as the houses start to crawl down, but as it pushes up the mountain, there's all the terraces. And again, you can see the stakes sticking up where they grow tomatoes and other vegetables. Not sure all the stuff they grow, but for this time of year, it's surprisingly green. But what an incredibly colorful and beautiful town. Imagine what it's like living through here in here. This is your like sidewalk up and down. It's like the favelas. That's what I just said. That's what I just told them like five minutes ago. We finally made it out, out of the tangled web of little pathways, narrow pathways. Right behind us though. Right behind us. And look at the beautiful rocks on the cliff side. The gorgeous sea right here. Over on the other side, you can see there's steps all the way down to the water. I don't think snow is going to be jumping in. No. But what a gorgeous little place and a gorgeous little town. And I got to tell you, we have had an amazing time in the short time we're here in Cinco de Terra. <laughs> Cinco Terra. Cinco Terra. <laughs> Are we going to grab some lunch? We're going to wind this video down. It is time to go 
Snow is worn out. We have seen two cities. Yeah. There is lots left to see here in Cinco yeah. Terre. We'll see you in a few days with the rest of it. All right, guys. Cheers. Cheers. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.